Vision family, it's your boy Trap Vision 3D man, and we back for another Black History Month moment. Uh, I appreciate you guys responding to yesterday's premiere. Uh, before we get started, man, I want to give a, a special shout out to Invicta202. Um, the people over there, man, if you on Facebook and you like dropping your watches, showing off your, your Invicta time pieces, go check that out. And uh, man, it's family, man. It's a whole family vibe over there, man. Husband and wife, the, the couple, man, it's dope. And I tell you what, they're definitely worth a, a, a Black History moment shout out man because uh they're making waves over there and if, if you meet them you're not a friend i'm telling you if you meet them you family now this is for today we're talking about benjamin banneker i encourage you to go over there and dig into his history into his past now what i found you know i learned about benjamin banneker in back in school right and if you like time all right pocket watch right then this is what i learned when i was as a kid they said that he had created a uh a clock and i was like wow you know they say he was a farmer i remember that so i dug into his history uh last week and i was shocked to find out that this man was more than just a, a clock maker which he is on record right now is as far as the United States is concerned, he was the first man to ever create a clock here. So the story tells that he was gifted or either borrowed a a uh, pocket watch. I'm more inclined to to say he borrowed it because I'll tell you why in, uh, a little later. But he was born in 1700s, I think like 1731 ish, somewhere around there. Uh, but I'll I, again, I encourage you to go check it out for yourself. But he was born a freed African American. Now, record has it, as you do, if you do some real research on this, record has it, they said his grandmother was white, but they can't prove it. There's no records of it. I will say this at this present time and day, they're not going to find it. Why would they want to know that information? Because you got to think about it. There were slaves <laughs> being had, people were making money. Off of slaves, man. It was life was our nation was being built on on their backs, man. And you find out that this man is free, and his grandmother could potentially be white. Uh, that's not a good look, you know. You know, I, I'll tell you this. From my experience, some history you'll never get the full or the real, the facts. You know what I'm saying? As my man would say, uh, keeping it a buck. That's to D. But um. Back to Banneker. Now, he was self-taught. Now, let this be a lesson to anybody. Even, even if you got your kids watching this or you're a teenager, I don't care where you are in life. Just know this. Benjamin Banneker was self-taught. He read books and learned. He was brought up on a farm, and he was born in Baltimore. So I know a lot of folks in Baltimore, they got to be proud of this. Um, he befriended some Quakers, which these are white folks that were, like, they were against slavery. These Quakers were against slavery, so they opened up. Now, I'm going to tell you something. They kind of helped, too. You know, I give Banneker his credit, but, like, he had help along the way. So people were giving him, well, these Quakers were giving him um, knowledge. They had a school, so they allowed him to learn. Do you know that I didn't know until this year that Benjamin Banneker created the Almanac? <laughs> this man created the Almanac. And I've never been one to like even open that book, that publication at all. But he wrote the almanac and he studied studied astronomy, right? So what's crazy is he's credited for literally studying the stars. He was able to to uh, predict eclipses like back in the 1700s. I think it's like 1791, 1792. He publicized a book in this, man about astronomy, man. Like uh, I mean, the almanac. Uh, he, they also said that he was he was real good, you know, with like he created an irrigation system. But I think one of the craziest things is when it comes to this pocket watch, right? Now, this is just a pocket watch I picked up uh, for uh, I went to an event, a uh, wedding actually, and not knowing the history of pocket watches, you know, per se, and the fact that in America. 
in America. There's so many clocks and watches. There's something that tells time in your house, right? So if you got a clock on the wall, think about this. This man took a pocket watch, right? Broke it down to peek like all the pieces out and he made the first clock to scale though. He made a clock that told accurate time, but he made it out of wood. <laughs> I'm like, what? If this man made it out of wood. So I'm like, okay. So this man, was a, he was a, a great farmer, irrigation system, right? Making sure everything, because I believe they sold tobacco, right? So he's an entrepreneur, probably balling out of control at that time, you know? Um, Self-taught, learn how to read. Now, his, they said that uh, his grandmother, I believe, taught him how to read. Now, is that fact enough? Because his parents, right, were slaves. They got their freedom, right? <clears throat> if his grandmother taught him how to read, <clears throat> excuse me, and his parents, well, you know, they didn't say they knew how to read or anything like that, but they said the grandmother taught him how to read. All I'm saying you can, I'm going to leave it, I'm going to let y'all decide on that one. But regardless of the fact, regardless of the fact, regardless of the fact, uh, there was another, th th there was one thing that just, just blew my mind. The fact that, and I, I would say it was, had to be off of his man, his mathematical skill, because they say he was a mathematician as well. He knew numbers. He built the irrigation system. So he was a surveyor, right? You know what the District of Columbia is? Now known our nation and capital. Ooh, that man surveyed it, right? So he laid the groundwork for our capital. I didn't know that. I did not know that. This man surveyed. He wrote it. He, now, they did have somebody else that was supposed to do it. It was some type of argument. It was something that happened. So the surveyor they had before took his plans and said, nope, you're not getting them. He bounced out for whatever reason. I, again, I encourage you to, you know, kind of dig it. And I'm just paraphrasing. I'm trying to rush through this. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, like, how do you really not taking anything away from uh, Banneker's lifestyle and what he accomplished, man? Because we owe this man. Now, when we hear the word founding fathers, which I want you to keep that in the back of your mind. Founding fathers. Founding fathers. We're going to talk about it a little in another episode. But wouldn't that make him a founding father as well? I mean, he did, you know, pretty much write the plans out for our nation's capital to be built. You know what I'm saying? And they, that what you saw where the White House is, man, created by a black man? That was unheard of, y'all. Unheard of. Now, and this, here's the crazy thing. Here's the crazy thing. Now, what do you guys know about Thomas Jefferson? Hmm. Thomas Jefferson, yeah. You dig into the history of Thomas Jefferson, you'll, you'll know a lot of things. But just know this, that man owned slaves. And it is written, it's to this day, and I'm not making this up. He felt that the black mind was inferior, right? And the way life was going for him, you know, we're just jumping over to his life real quick. He profited off of slaves and having slaves. Now, Constitution as we know it, Hmm. I seen the word equality in there. Men being equal, right? I seen that. Well, before that, let's not jump off too far. Um, my man, Benjamin Banneker, wrote Jefferson a letter. Now, he, of course, in this letter, according to history, let him know that I'm a free slave. Right? I'm a free man. I'm not going to say a free slave because he was never a slave. His parents were slaves. He's a free man, free African-American. And he is credited for the whole thought of civil rights. Like, he wrote Jefferson like, yo, the fact that you got slaves, the fact that men need to be created equal, people need to be treated fairly, it was actually he wanted his, his slaves to be treated better. Because uh, we're not even going to get into the ugliness of what slave not today at least, uh, of what slaves, like having slaves and what they did to slaves, you know, and it's even, I'm not even going to get into that either. Just notice before I end this, this video that Jefferson read it, sent it back, 
Banneker sent him an alm almanac, right? Jefferson looked at it, surveyed it, had it looked at, and they ran with it like, okay, this is good work. He sent it back. So when Banneker knew that Jefferson was kind of digging, and I'd imagine that Jefferson, knowing he's a black man, but he had to he had to pay like, wait a minute, can y'all verify is this dude really this smart? Like this, are you serious? He had to take notice. Now. Did that mean he respected him as a black man? I don't know. I, I don't have an answer for that. I'm pretty sure if I dig a little deeper, there may be some, some letters or some information stating how, you know, Jefferson actually felt about that. But I know he felt enough in that next publication that Banneker did. He actually put in there that Jefferson kind of put his stamp of approval on that almanac which helped him sell. And he was selling, I think he sold them almanacs for like six years. Now, check this out. Oh, before I forget, the pocket watch, the ball. When Banneker died, he left, no, he left a note for his family to return all of the things he borrowed from his neighbors. So earlier in this video, I had mentioned about, you know, the ball stuff, right? Or... The story said that it was given to him. Some said it was, you know, I don't know. I don't even know if he put it back together. That's, you know what, that's unknown. I gotta dig. I wonder if, did that man fit that? I imagine that if he built the clock, he put that watch back together, the pocket watch. I don't imagine he just <laughs> left it in pieces. But I've seen creative minds, man. Like when they get to working on stuff, it's like, yo, I get to that later. But just know, before we leave, just know, as he died, um, he is credited for a lot of things, which I, I, dude, I'm telling you guys, please go and dig into the history because he pushed the nation forward. So I'm giving him credit for being one of our forefathers, a, a man that actually helped forge what we see today. Secondly, secondly, I, it's, it's, it's tragic that his home, and that clock was burned upon his death. Set on fire. They said a mysterious fire. Yeah, imagine that. Well, one thing about history, whether you get the facts straight or not, is I know what happened in my history, in my family. And that will be told through notebooks. It's here on, on uh, YouTube. You know, you guys know what I've been doing up to this point. Uh, know what we stand for over here. Um... But there'll be people that tell stories of your history for years to come, you know. Uh, so that's one thing, whether it's uh, <laughs> washed down or whatever the case is, there's some truth about everything uh, in our timeline. So uh, I encourage you guys to continue to dig deep into these uh, these figures that I bring you. Uh, thank you so much for, for watching this, man. Uh, I do, I thank Benjamin Banneker for his accomplishments because now that makes me want to dig more into watches which i didn't do a watch of the day which i have an evicted time piece on which is big as it's big as big as a clock right and i love it i absolutely love it i love having big time piece we'll dig into that we'll dig more into people that collect watches black african-american whatever you want to call them afro-american uh so up to this point guys this premiere is done Thank you so much. I love all you guys. I appreciate your, your support. Hope you guys stay tuned throughout this, man. We got 28 days of black history, but I'm doubling up. So we'll have a ton of videos to watch. You'll know stuff. You'll hear sounds of blackness. You'll hear a lot of stuff, man. And y'all just stay tuned, all right? So until the next Lightning Strike family, man, y'all be blessed.